بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الناس معادن كمعادن الذهب والفضة The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said People are of different types Just like gold and silver are of different types Some gold and silver are of higher quality than others And so their value will be higher Some have better attributes than others And so people prefer them over other types And like this are people They are of different mannerisms Different temperaments and different characteristics. Some take one approach while others choose a different approach. Some are humble while others are arrogant. Some exude wisdom and sagacity while others are void of them. Some are amongst the best of creations while others are amongst the worst. You may search amongst many people only to find one rare person within the crowd. One pious person, for example. That is, if you even find that one. Those with the best of attributes are very rare to come across indeed. So if you find one, try not to lose them. We will proceed to first recite and then explain a few verses of poetry that were attributed to Al-Imam Al-Shafi'i radiyallahu ta'ala an. So it's mentioned that he said إِذَا الْمَرْءُ لَا يَرْعَاكَ إِلَّا تَكَلُّفَا فَدَعْهُ وَلَا تُكْسِرْ عَلَيْهِ التَّأَسُّفَا فَفِي النَّاسِ أَبْدَالٌ وفي الترك راحة وفي القلب صبر للحبيب ولو جفا فما كل من تهواه يهواك قلبه ولا كل من صافيته لك قد صفا إذا لم يكن صف الوداد طبيعة فلا خير في ود يجيء تكلفا ولا خير في خل يخون خليله ويلقاه من بعد المودة بالجفا وينكر عيشا قد تقادم عهده ويظهر سرا كان بالأمس قد خفا سلام على الدنيا إذا لم يكن بها صديق صدوق صادق الوعد منصفا So it's mentioned that he said إذا المرء لا يرعاك إلا تكلفا If the person only causes you unnecessary exertion If you find that you're in a relationship with a person who tires you out and you're having to do too much to keep a good friendship alive with them you are constantly the one reaching out you are trying to make the friendship work in a healthy way you support them during difficult times you think well of them and make many excuses for them you defend them every chance you get and the relationship just seems to be one-sided فَدَعْهُ وَلَا تُكْثِرْ عَلَيْهِ التَّأَسُّفَ Then leave him or her and do not be too sorry about it Meaning then leave this relationship since it tires you out for no good and do not feel regretful about having left it فَفِي النَّاسِ أَبْدَالٌ وَفِي التَّرْكِ رَاحَةٌ for in people, you'll find alternatives. And in leaving them, there is comfort. 
you will find others to befriend. So don't worry. As the saying goes, there are plenty of fish in the sea. And in leaving this person and departing such a relationship, you will find relaxation and comfort after all the efforts you were putting in before to no avail. وَفِي الْقَلْبِ صَبْرٌ لِلْحَبِيبِ وَلَوْ جَفَى And in the heart is patience for the beloved one, even if they shun you. If there was someone you truly loved and cared for, and such a relationship is just too important for you to forsake, then you will find the patience in your heart for them even if they aren't reciprocating your feelings. فَمَا كُلُّ مَنْ تَهْوَاهُ يَهْوَاكَ قَلْبُهُ For not everyone you love does their heart love you. Not everyone you care for will care for you. And not everyone you show kindness and goodness to will counter with the same. You may love someone truly and deeply, only to realize that they don't share the same feelings with you. You may think so well of someone and even look up to them, only to realize they look down at you. This poem accommodates for many scenarios between people. Take the example of someone who genuinely wanted to befriend another and develop a nice relationship with them. And they tried, but every time they knocked, that other one chose not to open. And every time they tried, they were denied and let down. There is a wisdom in all of that, even if the person does not see it at the time. And that is because everything happens by the will of Allah. Many times when you let something go, you get something better. There's a hadith, مَنْ تَرَكَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ أَبْدَلَهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا مِّنْهِ Whoever leaves something out for the sake of Allah, they leave it, they avoid it for the sake of Allah. And at times that may be a person, then Allah Ta'ala will grant that person who left this out, something better. Something better than what they have left out. وَلَا كُلُّ مَنْ صَفَيْتَهُ لَكَ قَدْ صَفَى And not everyone you've been pure towards has been pure with you. Not everyone you've been honest and genuine with in your dealings has been honest and genuine with you. Many people do not treat their friends with the same purity and goodness as they are treated with. Subhanallah. Imagine a person that approaches another with goodness and purity in their heart. They both have smiles on their faces, but one of them approaches the other with good feelings and goodness in their heart, and the other one is hiding malicious intent and bad feelings in their heart. The other one doesn't know that because they smile in your face, but Allah knows that. Wouldn't such a person feel shy to know that Allah sees you? SubhanAllah. A friendship is something very special. If one truly enters the realm of friends, if you want, this should mean something to both people involved. إذا لم يكن صف الوداد طبيعة If the purity of love is not natural, if pure love for one another is not the true nature of this relationship, if the speech, for example, exchanged between the two friends, and the way that they deal with one another, and the thoughts that they have about each other, 
and the actions that they take within their friendship isn't all built on a natural foundation of pure love, فَلَا خَيْرَ فِي وُدٍ يَجِيءُ تَكَلُّفًا then there is no good in a love which brings needless exertion. Where is the good in such a friendship? If the relationship isn't sitting on a natural base of pure and sincere love for one another, which from there would stem to all other dealings within this relationship, and instead it brings an unnecessary exertion of effort after effort, of being let down, then there is no good in such a friendship or relationship that is labeled as love, but is not truly built on a natural love. And there is no good in a friend who betrays his friend. A friend is not one who betrays. In fact, a Muslim is not one who betrays. وَيَلْقَاهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ الْمَوَدَّةِ بِالْجَفَى And he meets him after love with shunning. After having had a loving relationship with one in the past, he now gives him the cold shoulder. He ignores him. Or rather, he shuns him altogether. وَيُنْكِرُ عَيْشًا قَدْ تَقَادَمَ عَهْدُهُ And denies a relationship that goes way back. Their avoidance and shunning is in itself a denial of the past. As if that good relationship they once shared never happened. Although it extends far back. وَيُظْهِرُ سِرٌّ كَانَ بِالْأَمْسِ قَدْ خَفَى And he exposes a secret that yesterday he kept hidden. After having shared a good relationship and kept secrets for one another in the past, now that once upon a time friend has gone and exposed a secret. سَلَامٌ عَلَى الدُّنْيَا إِذَا لَمْ يَكُمْ بِهَا So peace be upon the dunya, if there isn't in it. صَدِيقٌ صَدُوقٌ صَادِقُ الْوَعْدِ مُنْصِفًا A truthful, just friend, trustworthy in his or her promise of friendship. In this dunya, nowadays, it is rare to come across a truthful friend who is just and pure in his or her dealings. Someone who says what they mean and means what they say. Who is trustworthy in their friendship and honest and easy in their bond with you. A friend you can truly trust and feel safe with. It was said that true friendship is a promise that you always keep. So when you accept to take someone as a friend, it is as if you are promising them to be just and honest, to be trustworthy and truthful, to think well of them, and to never betray them. A friendship like this is built on a foundation of natural love, with genuine dealings and good treatment. At times, one friend lifts the other up, while at times a friend drags the other down. If you know someone that is like this type of good friend, then hold on to them. And if you know that you are someone easily affected by those around you, their sayings and their actions, they have an effect on you, then be wise in choosing your friends because they will have a direct effect on you. Choose the one who will help lift you up and not drag you down. Some people are easily affected by the people they keep around them. 
And so if you know this about yourself, then you need to be wise in who you keep around you. If you keep the right people around you, that could work for your benefit. And in the same hadith that we started with, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Al-arwahu junudun mujannada Fama ta'arafa minha talaf Wama tanakara minha khtalaf This is in reference to when the souls were all gathered. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when this happened, some of the souls became accustomed to each other. They got along. They liked each other, in other words. While other souls met and did not get along, they didn't like each other. Some of the scholars explain this as a signaling towards similarities between good and evil, and virtue and corruption, and that the good one amongst the people would naturally lean towards the one who is like him, meaning they would lean towards a good person. That's the one that they feel more comfortable with. And the evil one, or the one that has malicious things inside of them, they would naturally lean towards one who is like them, an evil person, or someone with other bad qualities like them. And so, the souls getting along with each other is then according to the natures that they were created upon, from good or evil. So if their natures agreed, then the souls got along. And if their natures did not agree, they didn't get along, or they were repelled from each other. Then, once the soul enters the body, if those people met in this world, and they didn't get along in this world, it is very possible that it was because their souls met before, and they didn't get along. Subhanallahil Azim. Likewise, if people in this life met, and they got along, and they, if you want, entered into each other's heart very quickly, then it is possible that this is because when their souls met, they got along. Sometimes you meet someone and they enter your heart right away. Subhanallah. You even say to yourself, we just met, but I feel like I've known her for years. You say to someone, I just met Fulana, but I feel like I've known her for years. Subhanallah, Allah does what He wills, and Allah the Exalted knows best.